Tata Good morning, my name is Brian Hogan. Hogan. Some of you know me as teacher from English class. English teacher is only one job that I have with For the Nations. I do many things. My heart is to share the gospel, the good news of Christ's love to all people. But to share the gospel especially to the hurting, the lonely, and the broken. I trained as a pastor and a counselor so that I could be able to share that love with others. Pastor Satwell invited me to come and share a Christmas message with you this morning. Thank you for letting me be here. I pray that this message will bring you hope as we open God's word. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this season of Christmas. The season in which we celebrate the coming of your Son. When Word was made flesh. And you, you suffered alongside of us. I pray and thank you for these people. I pray that they would continue to know your love even as they live in a new and foreign land. I pray for this morning and that you would bless it. In Jesus' name. Amen. This morning I want to open up uh, Isaiah 11 with you and talk about the hope of Christmas and, and how do we carry it forward in, throughout the year. This past Monday we celebrated Christmas. For many Americans, we complain that Christmas is already over. The presents are open, the tree is coming down. And now we are looking to celebrate the new year. I was able to celebrate your new year a couple weeks ago and ours is tomorrow. With the new year, we either hope for new beginnings or we, uh, we want, we fear that our worries will not change in the new year. The question that I ask you does Christmas have a meaning outside of December 25th? 
Crew play a type of sort of community. And the last December, Kishi has done it. It's Christmas just one day out of the year. Crew play a type of sort of community. The soul, the or does the birth of Jesus have a meaning for us throughout all of our life? This morning I want to share with you Isaiah 11, 1 through 9. I've thought of a lot about this passage this Christmas. I think it helps us to see the hope of Christmas. It helps us to see the bigger picture of why Christ took on human flesh. At the birth of Jesus, a new king is born. And with him, a new rule and a new order for this world. Before we read the passage, I want to give us a context of where the passage is in the story of Israel, the people of the Old Testament. Israel was in a land of conflict. At this time, the kingdom was split into two, a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. The northern kingdom had already fallen, been conquered by the Assyrians. And now the southern kingdom faced the Assyrians coming and conquering them. They faced the threat of war. They faced the threat of oppression, the loss of freedom. Israel longed for someone to save them. I am learning about the history of your country. I do not know much yet. From what I have read, your people have suffered many, many years. You have faced war. You have experienced loss, loss of freedom, loss of family. I imagine that you can relate to the people of Israel. You can relate to their feelings of want for help, for peace. Safety. Israel expected a king, a savior. Israel Isaiah 11 shows us what kind of king Jesus would be. Uh, the kind of king that we need. We talk about Jesus coming and say, coming to save us from our sins. But this is good. This is right. We must remember also that when Adam and Eve sinned, the world was also broken. All things were broken. We were broken. Governments were broken. 
the whole world and everything in it was broken. Isaiah 11 shows us Christ, the King, who brings healing between God and us. Jesus as King brings a new rule, a new order. He brings peace. He brings healing. Let us read together Isaiah 11, 1 through 9. เคยกับพาเลอร์บอกกันยกโลกเนาะเดือดเลอเอาเวลาคุยเนี่ยวิชัยอาจารย์ดิจิตอลชวนเดือดเลอคุยดอซีบดุดบุกแมทเลอร์
Jesus sees and judges the world differently. My son is three. He has begun to tell me when his sister does something to him. It is always the same. She is wrong. He is the victim. I am not there to see what happens. I must judge based upon what I see and what I hear. Jesus is different. He does not rely on the reports of others. He knows and sees our hearts. He brings true justice because he knows our hearts. We also see that Jesus cares about the poor. In this country, we tend to look past the poor. When lots of people come to our city for big events like the Super Bowl, the city government will often put the poor people on buses and send them somewhere else. They want the city to look beautiful and no, no one see the poor people. And in courts, the poor people have hard time getting justice. Often because they cannot afford good lawyers. Jesus is different. He cares for the poor. In the Gospels, he says, I came to come, I came to serve the sick and the poor. He tells us he will do away with the wicked. He will bring justice to the poor. He will do right, he will right the wrongs of those who have been, uh, of the poor, who have suffered, who have lost everything. The rule of Christ will also uh, go to all of creation. The hope of Christ will bring change to the world in which we live. I love the word pictures that verses 6 through 9 give us about how our world will look under Christ's rule. Two things that should hate each other, that fight, that fear each other, now live in peace with each other under uh, under the rule of Jesus. The wolf and the lamb. The leopard and the young goat. The calf and the lion. They no longer fear each other, but they lie down together. They will no longer eat each other. And in verse 7, Isaiah says, even the lion will eat straw. 
Even more amazing, in verse 8, we see children playing around the hole of a snake. This picture is opposite of what we see in Genesis 3. In Genesis 3, God curses the snake and puts hate between man and the snake. And now here in Christ, we see the snake and the child getting along. This is an amazing picture of the hope Christ brings to us as king. It brings healing to our relationships with God. Our relationships with one another. It also brings healing to our relationship with all of creation. The world will no longer fight itself. And it will experience the salvation of Christ as well. This picture of what the world will be seems amazing. But this hope seems very far off. We often feel that our hopes will only come one day, someday far off. That all of our suffering will one day someday end. This is the picture that we see in Isaiah. But the birth of Jesus tells us something different. The hope for healing, the hope for justice, the hope for peace has come now. <coughs> And because of his life, his death, and his resurrection, we can taste that, that, that picture now. We're able to experience that hope now. Dog, what can you do? Let's go, bro, bro, bro.